One of my mom's favorite recipes is a classic split pea soup, and just smelling this soup while it cooks on the stove definitely takes me back to my childhood. It's a simple, comforting, and hearty soup made from a bag of dried split peas, but what really amplifies the flavor and makes it next level is the ham bone that simmers while it cooks. So if you've got a leftover ham bone after a holiday like Easter or Christmas, this is a must make recipe. But if you don't have a ham bone lying around, I'll also give you a few ways that you can adapt the recipe and still enjoy it today. All right, let's dive in. Similar to my other soup recipes, this one starts with a mirepoix base of diced celery, carrot, and onion. You'll need two stalks of celery, two carrots, and one onion. And while I'm dicing those up, I just have to ask you guys, does anyone else remember the pea soup Anderson's restaurants in California in the 70s and 80s? I remember old family road trips where we'd pass by those restaurants and they were notable because of the big Dutch windmill out front. And my mom would of course say, ooh, let's stop and get some split pea soup. Those restaurants, if you didn't know, have since gone out of business, but the good news is that you can now make a very similar restaurant-worthy split pea soup in your own kitchen. And making it from scratch really is the way to go for the best flavor. Those packaged and canned versions of split pea soup that you can buy from the market really are so lackluster compared to this homemade version with fresh ingredients. Once you try this recipe, you can give me your feedback, of course, but I'm pretty confident that you'll agree with me. All right, now that the veggies are all diced up, let's talk about the ham bone. As you can see from the one I'm using today, there's still a bit of meat left on it, and that's ideal. Not only will it flavor the soup, but you'll chop up that extra ham and add it back into the soup at the end. But if you don't have a meaty ham bone, even a non-meaty one will add flavor. And if you wanna skip the ham bone entirely, you can use a ham hock or simply add diced ham from store-bought ham steaks. I've even used diced pancetta in this recipe before and skipped the ham entirely. So point being is that there's lots of options to tweak it and I'll list all those options for you in the recipe blog post on my website. You'll need one pound of dried split green peas for this recipe, though you could also use yellow split peas. Just note that green split peas are a bit sweeter and yellow split peas are a bit more earthy. And if you think that the texture of this soup looks similar to my lentil soup recipe, that's because split peas are part of the legume family, like lentils, and do cook to a similar soft texture in soups. Add a couple of tablespoons of olive oil to a large stock pot or Dutch oven over medium high heat, and then dump in the carrots, celery, and onion. Saute that for three to four minutes or until the veggies have softened, then mince two garlic cloves on top and stir that together for another minute. Add the dried split peas after you've given them a rinse and sort through, and pro tip, just don't rinse them too far in advance, otherwise they'll clump together. Then add half a teaspoon of dried thyme, half a teaspoon of kosher salt, and half a teaspoon of freshly ground black pepper, and stir it all together. And see, now you can see what I mean about the split peas clumping together a bit, but that's fine, just break them up with your spoon. Next, you'll add the ham bone, and you can just nestle it in between the veggies, one bay leaf, four cups of low sodium chicken broth, and three cups of water. The ham bone itself can impart extra salty flavor to the soup, so I always default to a bit less kosher salt and low sodium broth to start, because you can always add more salt to taste at the end if you'd like. Give the veggies around the ham bone a stir, just to make sure nothing's stuck together, then bring the soup to a boil. Once it's boiling, reduce the heat to a low simmer, cover the pot, and cook the soup for 50 to 60 minutes, stirring it occasionally, until the soup has thickened a bit and the peas have broken down. At this point, you'll use tongs to carefully remove the ham bone to a cutting board, and then you're gonna dice up the remaining meat from the bone. My recipe calls for one cup of diced ham that you'll add back into the soup, but if you have a bit more or a bit less, it's really no biggie. And if you don't have a lot of meat on your ham bone, this is where you can just add diced ham from purchased ham steaks back into the soup. In the five to 10 minutes or so that it took to dice up the ham, you can see that the soup has thickened nicely. And then all that's left to do is toss the diced ham into the soup and give it a stir to get all of that flavor dispersed. Lastly, use tongs to locate your bay leaf and then remove that because no one wants to accidentally chop down on a bay leaf in their bowl of soup. This is a soup recipe that definitely thickens the longer it sits. So if you find that it's thickening up a bit too much for your liking, you can always add another cup of water or broth to thin it back down to your preferred texture. 
And if you plan to meal prep this soup, which I did do, be forewarned that it will definitely thicken into a solid mass in the fridge. But again, it's super easy to thin back down when you reheat it. After serving up portions in individual bowls, I like to add a little sprinkle of fresh herbs on top and some freshly ground black pepper for that finishing touch. And you guys, I was so thrilled when I made this recipe that it tasted just like I remembered as a kid. And it truly is a bowl of warming comfort food. I hope you all enjoyed today's video, and if you did, make sure to hit that like button as it helps to support my channel. Share this recipe with your family and friends, and let me know in the comments below what favorite soup recipe of yours you'd like to see me make next.